Without a doubt, one of the best 3D software are Maya and Houdini. They both can do amazing things, and they are used on a wide range of projects from video games, VFX projects or TV and film, advertisements and more. But the question is, why would anyone choose to use Maya over Houdini or vice versa? And in which industry each one of them is best suited and why you should choose Maya or Houdini depending on your needs? Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys, especially Maya users, if you need Maya plugins and scripts for modeling, retopology, rigging, animation, rendering, you name it, you will find a list of the best stuff in the description of this video. For example, for retopology, you can use a plugin like Z-Rail that allows you to create polygons on sculpted surfaces in a beautiful way. And if you want to do some hard surface modeling, you can take a look at plugins like Mod It, Plug It, and Stamp It, which will allow you to create complex hard surface models like robots, weapons, or anything else of this kind. For animation, I highly recommend the Pavel Barnav animation scripts because they are just amazing, and they are used by many VFX and game development studios. For simulation and effects, you can use some of the best tools like Fume Effects for fire, smoke, and explosions, Pull Down It for destruction effects, and Ornatrix for hair and fur. So I highly recommend you check out these tools because it will save you a ton of time and headaches, but it will also support this channel. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Maya was first released in 1998 by Alias Systems and Wavefront Technologies, and after going some contributions from the likes of Disney and after several different acquisitions, it was finally acquired by Autodesk in 2005, which kept developing it from then till the Maya we know today. Houdini on the other hand has started in 1996, which is earlier than you might think, given that studios began relying on it just after the mid-2000s, which is interesting. The first thing that you should know is that they are both industry standard 3D software. A pretty big deal if you are looking to secure a spot in one of the big studios such as ILM, Disney or Double Negative for example. The reason why is that these two have both established themselves in the early days of VFX, game development and animation. And this helped the software to be more popular in the industry. Not to mention the feedback from those studios and sometimes their direct involvement like with the case of Disney and Maya, which sped up its development quite a lot. The second thing is that they both have a steep learning curve, something that Autodesk and SideFX have worked on a lot to make it a much more accessible software and user friendly. And sometimes you just cannot escape the node-based workflow in Maya and Vax in Houdini. I mean that is what made these two software really powerful and really popular, especially Houdini because it can give you a lot of freedom and flexibility. Now let's talk about what sets Maya apart from Houdini, and I'm sure you have already guessed it, and yes, it is proceduralism. And for those of you who don't know what proceduralism or a procedural workflow is, it is basically creating a set of rules and instructions for the software to follow instead of having to create everything manually. And this applies to everything from creating landscapes to buildings, textures and visual effects. The simplest example is if you want for example to create a forest in a 3D scene, you don't have to place each tree by hand. So with a procedural workflow, you just want to create a set of rules that say, for example, create trees that have an X amount of branches, twigs and leaves, and place those trees in certain areas of the forest while leaving others empty. All this while having control over the size of those trees at each different area. It basically allows for a better art direction. That's why you see more software moving in this direction, especially software such as Blender with geometry nodes. The interesting thing is that this is something that Maya did not have until 2019 with the introduction of Bifrost Graph. But even with that, Maya couldn't keep up with Houdini, but more on that later. By the way, we have a full video about Bifrost and the interesting story behind it. It is really great and I recommend you take a look at it.
Another thing that can be lumped under proceduralism is that Houdini has its own visual programming language called VAX. While you might say that Maya has MEL too, it is nowhere near the complexity of VAX. MEL is more focused on creating scripts and plugins, which is great because we have a ton of cool Maya plugins, while the purpose of VAX is to manipulate geometry and create custom shaders and high quality effects. One other difference these two software have, and to be honest, it is becoming more and more like a similarity, especially the last couple of years. And this is what kind of task is the software used for. Back in the day, Maya was especially used in game development and animation and a little bit of VFX. On the other hand, Houdini was solely focused on VFX projects, but now it is used by game developers, animators, and every project under the sun, because it is becoming really versatile and really useful. So, to elaborate more, back in the day, Maya was known to do all forms of things, like modeling, rigging, animation, as well as set dressing and rendering, which is still the case today. While Houdini, on the other hand, Looks like it can do only effects, in addition to simulations, such as fires, smoke, water, and all sorts of simulations. Even big studios used it for that purpose too. And they would do scene assembly in Maya or Max, which is the case for a lot of projects. Actually, the majority of projects. But with the improvement that side effects has put to place, especially when it comes to rigging and animation tools, adding to that the Solaris Contacts, which has a lot of powerful tools for set dressing and rendering, Houdini is becoming more and more powerful, and it is becoming an all-around 3D software. Plus, Houdini also has some compositing tools, which lets you create and manipulate images or sequences, which Maya does not have. Now, let's go back to the Bifrost we mentioned earlier and talk about it a little bit and see how does it compare to the power of Houdini. So, before becoming Bifrost, the tool was called Nyad, and it was owned by a company called Exotic Matter, focusing mainly on fluid simulations like liquids, and it was in fact used in movies like the first Avatar movie. Then, after getting acquired by Autodesk, the tool disappeared in 2012 making a comeback in 2015 in Autodesk Maya as a tool to simulate liquids as well. Autodesk kept developing the tool until 2019, when Bifrost saw its final form by becoming a node-based visual programming environment inside Maya, allowing the creation of realistic effects and simulations like cloth and explosions, in addition to scattering and instancing objects to create all sorts of environments. That being said, Bifrost did not find that much success in studios and pipelines, and I'm going to tell you why. Well, simply it came a little bit late to the party, because Houdini was already fully integrated into the industry, especially when it comes to their procedural software of choice. So, for studios to hop into another software, it was gonna cost them a lot. Don't get me wrong though, a lot of studios are more than happy to use it, especially the one who uses Maya as their main tool. For example, to create an effects and render them directly in Maya using Arnold, we can give that example for the Pirates of the Caribbean. But for others, I can totally understand. I mean, the power and control that Houdini offers is just incredible. Now that we have a solid idea about both software, let's see how they compare in different production environments. Let's start with motion graphics. As a lot of artists are coming from another software like Cinema 4D, where motion graphics tools are a huge deal, and it is one of the main reasons why it is used, you want to know how actually Maya and Houdini perform against it. For Houdini, it should go without saying that it can do a lot, given its procedural nature. Better yet, it has an add-on called Mops, which has all the necessary tools like cloning and transformations, which spares you from writing any VAX code. Maya, on the other hand, has its own toolkit for this job, and it is called MASH. As for game development, each one has its own benefits. I mean, Maya is still the go-to software for modeling, animation, and rigging, while Houdini still struggles in this area in comparison, or at least, it is not used as much when it comes to this. 
but it is really suited for building environments procedurally, especially with the Houdini engine, which is used with Unity and Unreal Engine, and this allows Houdini digital assets to work directly on those game engines. Moving on now to VFX, I don't think we can debate here which one is better. As we all know, Houdini really excels in this field. Thanks to the solvers that it has, such as the Pyro for Fire and Explosions, in addition to Flip for Liquids. But Maya is not bad too. It just works better when you use plugins like Phoenix FD, and with the addition of Bifrost, you can create amazing things. So, to wrap things up, what software you want to choose actually depends on what you want to do. So, if you want to be a game developer or an animator, you should go with Maya, because it excels at modeling, rigging, animation and many other things but learning houdini as well can be great for many things but mainly maya is going to be great for animation and game development on the other hand if you want to join the vfx industry you should primarily learn houdini but maya is also great since vfx work still has modeling animation and many other things but effects are the main thing that's why learning houdini is highly recommended so, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.